Welcome to this video review and today I'm going to talk about the new Pulsar Thermal Binoculars called the Merger and at the moment there is only one model, the XP50 uh, laser range finding model. So as you probably know, Pulsar is a market leader in thermal imaging, at least in Europe, but I also think that globally. They're based in Lithuania and they were also one of the first companies that entered the market of thermal optics for, for civilian use, I would say mainly for hunters, even though these devices can be used also for, uh, for rescue, uh, search and rescue and so on, and many other uh, applications, even though I would say majority of users are hunters. Uh, so this particular device uh, was uh, presented this year at uh, EVA uh, 2022. Please check our EVA report about this product. Uh, even though in that report I made a small mistake, which you are able to see if you look at the, at the report. So the device uh, is a successor of a very, very successful model called the Accolade. Basically almost identical functions but uh, improved in many ways. I will speak up more about this um, in the review or maybe I can do it just now. So the first big difference is the lens. So now the merger has a fast aperture 50, mill 50 millimeter 0.1 lens. You can see a little bit bigger than Accolade. The second I would say really big thing is that it's made out of magnesium, so it has a magnesium housing, while Accolade had a plastic housing, even though it was very durable and um, there was nothing that we could say uh, that Accolade lacked, but still magnesium is a uh, one step further. And the display, it's much bigger on, uh, on the new merger than it was on the, on the previous model. So the display before was 640 by uh, 480. Now this one has a much bigger 1024 by 768 pixel display. Um, there are also some additional quirks like the, uh, the sensor, which sees if you're using it or not. Uh, so you can, it, the device can go into sleep mode really fast if the sensor detects that you're not using it. Uh, and also the battery is now, one battery is internal, so you're able to do a hot swap, or how they say it, you're able to swap the external battery, the IPS3 battery, uh, APS3 battery, and the device still works in the meantime. And due to all other improvements from Pulsar, even though this one has much smaller batteries than previous, uh, this um, IPS7 batteries, uh, the battery life is now even longer. So there are quite a few improvements even though this device is a little bit bigger, also a little bit heavier due to everything what I mentioned. So it also features IPX7 waterproofing so it can be submerged into one meter uh, of depth for 30 minutes. And it works also in the temperature range from minus 25 to plus 50. It's roughly 20 centimeters long and roughly 14 centimeters wide and six, seven centimeters uh, tall. Uh, the weight is 800 grams. Um, startup time is around five seconds, even though I would highly recommend that you check our real startup time uh, videos. I would also recommend that you see at the end of this video, my sweet and sour part where I go through the positives and negatives and also where I talk about the market position of this device at the moment and all the competitors. So like I said, it's uh, made in Lithuania. It comes also with a, a possibility of a Wi-Fi connection to your smartphone and with a StreamVision 2 app, uh, which works really well and it was much improved. So now the connections are even more stable and so on. It comes with three years warranty, even though because this is a device made in European Union and based on the previous experience, I'm sure that they will be able to service it, service it for a much longer period of time than just three years in warranty. Uh, all in all, I would say that Pulsar service for really old devices like quantum devices, which are now almost 10 years old, is still splendid and nobody can come near to it, especially not the Chinese manufacturers. So um, the device doesn't feature any power indicator, 
so there is no LED, LED diode that would uh, show that when the device is on and off, but with five seconds startup time and you hear the calibration when it happens, this is not such a big problem, even though I would still wish to have some kind of uh, power indicator outside like the Axion series has it. Uh, what is a big improvement is that this feels like a like a normal binoculars it also looks like a normal binoculars uh, so even though it's bigger than the accolade it's uh, I would say less alien looking <laughs> than, than the previous device okay if we go through the batteries so the battery time is around 10 hours uh, with an internal battery and this external battery you're able to really switch it really fast and these batteries are really affordable so I do recommend you buy a couple of them uh, together you're getting also a charger for two such batteries you get a tripod adapter you get a charging cable and uh, the adapter for the socket a really nice carrying bag the quick start guide and one two three four five six languages yes six, lang six languages um, so this all comes in the box for roughly 4,690 euros. So for the same price as the Eclat before. I also think that this price is extremely competitive. Honestly speaking, when you look at all other thermal binoculars, they, they undercut them on price and they over deliver on what you get with magnesium housing, with the image quality, which is just superb and so on. So the sensor inside is basically the same sensor as it was in uh, in the Accolade, or very similar at least in the Accolade Pro. So it's uh, 640 by 480 in, behind this 50 millimeter germanium lens with a fast departure of one. Here on this side, you have a laser range finding system which works up to 1000 meters. Uh, the pixel pitch on this is 17 microns, so it's a little bit bigger, 50 hertz. And the NATD is only 25 millikelvins. So this is a really high sensitive sensor you get really great resolution and great um, I would say uh, details recognition uh, it has three different calibration modes even though most of the people just use the automatic so here behind the oculars which can be used also with glasses I'm an eyeglass wearer and I have no problems uh, you're also able to adjust the interpupillary distance all the way down to I think 69 or 67 millimeters uh, you have to check the specs so it's really really easy to use and you're able also to set the diopter compensation on each of your eyes so it's really easy to get a perfect image uh, all in all the the eyepieces are really well made for this category even though not near uh, as they are not as near as good on the classical optics they still need to reach that level. So the screen behind them is a 1024 by 768 AMOLED. So a better resolution before. And all in all, the optical performance is really good. When you see it, it's just fascinating. So the base magnification is 2.5. It goes all the way to down, uh, up to 20. You get a field of view at the base magnification of 216 meters and 1000 meters. So a really wide field of view. 1,800 meters of detection with, with really good um, details recognition. Uh, eight color modes, the cross focus, you're focusing here. It's not on the central um, um, rotating button like it was before. I also think this is a much better solution, easier to produce and easier to use. So the close focus goes down all the way to three meters. And um, I would say, when you try it, there is not a lot of competition at the moment that could uh, compare to it. Uh, the LRF function, like I said, 1000 meters, minimum range is 3 meters, also again really good. Uh, you can really measure it closely and the accuracy is 1 meter in general or I, I would say up to 300 meters. I think it's half a meter of accuracy and then 1 meter, more than good enough. Now you also have a dedicated button for it and that's really really good when we speak about the menus and the buttons i would say that ergonomically speaking this device is really good compared to all other Pulsar devices even though there is not much to to say to other devices but you have a power on off button you have a button for taking 
photos or videos. You have a laser range finding button, menu button and plus and minus where you're able to choose between menu options and um, their values. Like with all poster devices, a short menu press, uh, press of the menu button gives you a basic menu where you're able to set the contrast and uh, um, brightness and similar stuff. And then when you go in into a, a advanced menu there, you're able to choose a lot of other stuff. Now what's new with this poser is that you have amplification modes. So how much is the image amplified? Uh, so basically in the, in the past, like infrared, for instance, or similar devices, they really push their contrast to the maximum, which gives a, a, a special impression. When you first try an infrared or something like that, some other competing product in the past, at least it was like, wow, you immediately see the animals uh, I would say brighter than anything else, but when you use them for a couple of minutes and so on, then you see that the details are not that good. With let's say with the Accolade, you saw the details much better, but the animals didn't pop out as much from the surround, surrounding uh, or, or the background. So now they went in and they did the application mode, so they're able to, to choose what kind of application you wish to have and also a filter. So. I would say majority of people will go with magnification, amplification maximum and then filter without. <laughs> uh, you get a really interesting image, even though it's, I would say, a little bit harsh on your eyes, even though, honestly speaking, the details are just incredible, but it's really harsh on the eyes. So maybe uh, when you're using it for, for a prolonged period of time, you go with a amplification mode of medium and then with the filter on. All in all, really a lot of different functions like eight color modes and so on, you're really able to configure the device to your taste and then even save this configuration. Um, normally, when you speak about the connectivity when you speak about the buttons, everything can also be controlled through stream vision. When you connect uh, the device with your smartphone, there is an internal memory built in of uh, 16 gigabytes. So you're able to take a lot of uh, videos and photos, which I think that majority of users will do. Uh, when I speak about the, I already mentioned this proximity sensor, which is here. It's really, really interesting because uh, when you're using it, you normally see the image when you put it down. Uh, after one second or something like that, the device goes into sleep mode. So basically the display is turned off. So it preserves energy. When you put it close to your eyes, it immediately powers on. And I really think immediately because a lot of devices have a problem that this uh, uh, back to sleep mode is not immediate that you have to wait and it's annoying and so on not with this poser even Myself, I'm quite picky about it I really hate this function on most of the riposcopes and so on when let's say in the riposcopes the reticular illumination turns off when When the device is not used So I was quite skeptical about this proximity sensor on this device, but I'm able to live with it so that's already very very good and I have doubts if it's going to be even better in the future because even now it's really polished. Okay, so I think we came to the last part, which is <clears throat> most interesting for majority of viewers of these videos. This we see from, from the analytics. So I'll go from the sweet and sour of this device. Uh, what could can be done better? What is already really good? I forgot to mention that you have a type C uh, possibility port here where you're able to connect the device to a computer or to a power bank even though with these batteries and this prolonged battery life I'm not sure you will ever need it check our real battery life videos um, okay so what I think is really positive and what could can be done better um, okay the image quality is really good and now in 2022 I would say the thermal is really, I would say it's getting there where we all wish that it would be. And this device is on the, uh, on the first front. It's really, really good. The build quality. Now, if we missed with Accolade, we missed the build quality and the design, this nice design of Axions and similar devices. Now with Merger, we have this. So it's really the magnesium housing, the IPX7 waterproofing and so on. It's really built well. Um, what I also like is the 
LRF function so that you have everything in, in a single device. And I also did the thing that ergonomics is really good. So it's really easy to have all six buttons under your control and holding it even for a prolonged time and so on. Now when it's shaped like a normal binocular, it's really good. Uh, the battery system, I'm, I was a bit skeptical because this APS-3 batteries are really, really small. They came with the first generation and still the current uh, version of XM, uh, Axions, so the, the small monocular composer. Uh, but obviously they did so much work on, um, on the algorithms and everything that now the battery consumption is so low that even with this battery, with the internal battery, you can use this device for 10 hours, which is, which is really astonishing. So all in all, even the battery system is really good. And I like the fact that they changed, they moved the, um, the focusing system to this lens because now, in my opinion, it works better, even though ergonomically speaking and because we are all used to normal binoculars, positioning here was also good, but the functioning was not that great, especially when you compare them with the premium top class uh, classical optical binoculars. Okay, now sour. What is sour? I would say that there is no equivalent horizontal range in this device. At least I was not able to find it. Maybe if I made a mistake now, please correct me below in the, uh, in the comments. And normally I didn't, was not able to find any ballistic software. So this device would be perfect if, if it would contain also the ballistic software. I also think that for the LRF function, the range could be a little bit better. 1000 meters is good, but Let's look at Leica Geovids, they go to 2000 and more without a problem. All in all, still for this price point, even though normally 4700 euros, almost 4700 euros is not a small amount of money, what you're getting is just wow. And especially because this is the same price as the Ecolite, but this has a magnesium housing, a better screen, better battery consumption, a lot of stuff in better lens much bigger lens and so on so it has a lot of stuff that uh, it's upgraded from the accolade but still it kept the same price so the price point is also astonishing for what you're getting so not a lot of stuff that could be sour now let's go to the competition i would say that at the moment the only real competition is uh, guide tn series they have four models so they have an advantage uh, that you're able to pick which sensor, which lens, and so on. Uh, I also think that their form factor is really good. I really like their design, but they're made out of plastic. Uh, the image quality is not on this level, even on the top model, which is far more expensive than this one. Almost 1,000 euros more expensive, but the image quality is not just there uh, because the sensor NETD of guide devices is lower. Uh, lower, it's higher. So this one with a 25 millikelvins of NETD, that means that the temperature difference between two dots can be only 25 millikelvins and the device will already recognize it. So it gives you a lot of details. So, but still, I would say the, the Guide TN series is, is a direct competitor. So the plus is that there you're able to choose which lens, which sensor, uh, and you're also able to get the thermal binoculars much cheaper with a, with a smaller lens with a, and with a smaller sensor. But on the other side, they are not equally well made. They are not... Um, offering the same level of optical quality and they are made out of plastic and they are made in China. So again, this is a European product made in Lithuania. Uh, it's going to be easier to service it and so on. Okay, so what about other competition? You still have the ATN, Bino X, 4T. Again, the form factor of Bino X is quite good, but uh, I do think that build quality is not on the same level, not even close. And from what I have tried also, the optical quality is not on the same level and again, a much higher price. Then you have Deepol, which it's not a direct competitor because honestly speaking, it looks like a military device and it's much more expensive and so on. You have GSCI devices and so on. You have many other thermal binoculars which are far more expensive, but on the other side, they don't offer better image quality. So. All in all, if you are able to afford it, 
I would say this is probably now the go-to device on the highest level of, uh, I would say, uh, optical performance on the civilian market for hunting and outdoors activities in the segment of thermal binoculars. So thank you for watching. I hope you found this review useful and see you in the next one.